practice, I have to make sure I'm prompt with you, as you should be prompt with myself, so we respect each other's times. Okay? So we're going to get started. All right? So first and foremost, it's almost like a tennis match. Okay? I am the referee, if you will. I come here. Let me explain the rules to the game. Okay? So what is the most important concept when it comes to techniques? And by the way, how can you now combine your techniques and tactics because they have to come together. If you just focus on technique, you're not on the boat. If you just focus on tactics, you're swimming to the boat, but you're still not on it. You have to combine both of them to make sure you have something really good and really special. And that's the way we want to make sure that our students understand and they so learn. Writing this down, okay, and say, what is technique to me? Okay, and I want you to write down as many things as possible. And I'm only going to give you 20 seconds. Write down as many things as you can when it comes to what you know about technique. Are you ready? Great. Go. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's start with this. Okay. Carthy, I see you up there. Absolutely. So please unmute yourself and then tell me. So when you go with the ground strokes, you turn your body. Beautiful. So contact point. Okay. Follow, Give me one more. Through. All right. And Carly, let me stop you right there, not to be rude, but I also let's add on from the other guys. But I tell you what I want you guys to do also is I want you now to write the follow through down. Because this is almost, and I'm going to compare it to Pluto, uh, to Pluto, the planet. Okay. The ninth planet. And it depends who you talk to. And we're going to see actually if this is going to be part of technique or if it's not part of technique. And that's a great point that we can get to. So, guys, outstanding. Please remember that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's bring up some concepts when it comes to technique. Okay. There is technique when it comes to waist up, and there's technique when it comes to waist down. Okay. Ready position. Okay. So let's start with the very start of the swing. Okay. You have a ready position. You have a unit turn. Some of you guys mentioned the unit turn. Yeah, maintaining of the unit turn as you move towards the ball. So separation of what we call bilateral coordination, okay? And also transverse coordination from waist up and waist down. And then, of course, one thing that people forget all the time is the utilization of the non-dominant arm. For example, I'm a right-hander. If I'm going to hit my forehand, okay, I have to do something with my left hand. If my left hand is moving around or it's down or it's in, that's going to affect the center of gravity, and a lot of you guys alluded to the center of mass. There's a big difference between both of them, and that's something we can talk to or we can talk about later on. All right, and tracking. Okay. Uh, can I put you guys on the spot a little bit? And you guys don't, you guys can raise your hand when it comes to the Zoom, or you guys can raise your hand when it comes to the video. Has anybody ever told their player to watch the ball? I know I've been. Yeah. I need you guys to watch the ball. Please watch the ball. Has anybody ever told their student to watch the ball? We all do it, right? We've all done it. Okay. But we can really relate this now to what we're doing here. Three basic primary colors. So now let me bring it up to you one more time. What are the three basic primary technical components? when it comes to the stroke. Contact point is by far the number one. Number two, extension. Extension is by far the second most important thing. Now, be careful with this, and if you wanna put an asterisk next to it, okay, please do. One, now we're relating this a little bit more to the ground stroke, okay? We're relating this a little bit more when it comes to the serve, to the return, Okay, not so much for the volley unless we're talking about the swinging volley and the drive volley. So there's two strokes that really don't have this, and that's going to be your block and your drop. Okay, your, your block volley and your drop volley. Everything else is going to have some sort of extension. And number three, something you were all taught when you were younger, something I was taught when I was younger, and even though we teach it differently, it's still there. It's an early racket preparation. Now, the technical term is your split units, is your unit term. If you don't get the unit term back in time, if you don't have those hands up and ready, 
you're not going to be able to strike. If you don't have those hands up in time, you're not going to have time when the ball comes fast to make sure you drop and then hit. Those three components are the most important things when it comes to the stroke. And right now, again, more of the ground stroke. Okay, when it comes to the serve, for example, okay, getting ready, making sure the contact is there. Again, the height of it has to be perfect. You don't want them here, you don't want them here, you don't want them there. And then, of course, you have an extension through the deceleration phase of it. Okay, so it applies to all of it, minus the two strokes that we talked about. So what are primary techniques we just talked about at the contact point, the extension, and the unit turn? Without these, the foundation of what you build will fall down. At some point, the rest of it, the secondary technical components will fall down. But also remember, for these, the foundation that you build will stand up under pressure. This is why the best players in the world, and this is why the best players you guys have, are able to be consistent in production because they really have those three things that are consistent when it comes to performance. They can execute those things right. over and over. Again. And once they get to the ball, they're trying to do everything here when it comes to preparation, back swing, drop. They actually get too tight and the ball gets too close and then they hit. So my recommendation for you is this. Start them with a split unit. Okay, the unit term minimum has to go to the back shoulder. So me as a right-hander on the forehand. We'll go to my right shoulder on the back, and of course, we'll go to my left. And you can see, and then from there, they will run with a position that is completely quiet from waist up. From waist up, the racket does not move at all. From here, the racket does not move, it's quiet. So, as the waist up position okay, is quiet, okay, the waist down position is moving as you set up to hit the shot. Now, the waist down position is quiet. The weight up position, now you start the swing. Okay, so usually that's the scenario. That's where the problem is, Abibir. Not all the time. Let me give you one more aspect too. Start with that though. So start with the unit turn. So a bit over in the ad and you toss the ball. Teach them how to move around and get away from the ball. That usually also gives a better idea. Now, you have to teach them. First thing you do is you split in units and then you move away. And then you move away, okay? And that also helps out quite a bit. You have to try a couple of those. Okay. Karthik, I see you. If there is any teaching technique order to teach the ground stroke, I for example, you know, if you are teaching a forehand, for 10-year-old kid, if I'm teaching a forehand ground stroke, so if there is any teaching order, like a, instead of unit yeah. turn, I have to take your racket. So what are those things? Look, it's a, it's a great question, and really alludes to what we're working on today. Okay, three things. Contact point, extension, early racket preparation, or unit turn, okay? I will put them in that order. I will not mess with feet. I will not mess with anything. Even though we talk so much about footwork and footwork is so important, you have to focus on those three things first because then people will start understanding what are called the pro prioriceptors. So pro prioriceptors are just the spacing. They start understanding these things all on their own, okay, for the most part. But if you start focusing on feet and you start focusing on other aspects, the coordination aspect is going to struggle. Teach the most important thing. Teach contact. We all do this, by the way. It doesn't matter if it's a 10-year-old. It doesn't matter if it's a 45-year-old or 65, and they're just beginning to learn the game. We all do this. Toss the ball and have them catch. We know this. Are you comfortable catching high? Not really. Are you comfortable catching low? It's okay. But not, Are you comfortable catching perfect? Yeah. One thing we tell players is, and I know, sorry to use a silly analogy, but I love using this with little ones is, or even older ones is, imagine your head is a cup of water. The moment you tilt your head just a little bit, okay, you're going to spill okay, the cup of water that's full. So when they catch the ball at that ideal contact point, okay, most likely they're going to be stable. But if it's a little too low, they'll spill. If it's a little too high, they'll spill like we talked about earlier. Okay, so you start coaching them in that aspect. Coach the contact point first. From there, because again, the court is long, guys. You want to teach the extension out. Okay? So contact point, ideal, teach the extension as they want to send the ball to the other side. Okay? One thing we'll talk about in the future is the net is the number one opponent, not the other person. You got to clear the net. Well, you don't know this. You got to clear the net before you get to the other one. So if you're an extend... Sometimes you can get away with it, but a lot of times you're going to start missing in the net. 
especially as players of a high level get tired. That's when you start seeing misses in the net. So contact point first, extension, and then you teach the unit term preparation. You do those three things, you're in really good shape. Okay, really good shape. Because naturally now, the ball and socket uh, aspect of the arm, that falls into place, guys. This is a natural motion when it comes to the arm. Okay, so once you have the arm up, okay, to really go back and drop, okay, it's a natural motion anatomically when it comes to the ball and socket joints. Okay. Does that answer, Karthik? Yeah, thank you, Coach. Well, okay. Of course. Then I'll let you guys go. You guys, again, were wonderful. Anything, please shoot us a text, or you can uh, always send me a DM, a direct message. Uh, and then hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys next week Okay, as we bring up the next topic of conversation, <laughs> and we'll go from there. So, again, thank you all for this wonderful webinar, and I'll see you guys hopefully next week.